Hey there, Abdul. Abdul asked a question on the comment section of the Ultimate Guide to A-Level Biology by Taylor Tutors. He said, Rich, what kind of question could you get on denitrification? What could they ask about aerated soil? Okay, so I've trawled all the past papers as per usual, Abdul. And the most common one is going to be actually just they're going to give you a diagram of the nitrogen cycle. They'll be like, name this pathway, maybe called X, and it could be just pulling out, oh, it's going from soluble nitrogen in the soil to nitrogen gas in the atmosphere. That must be denitrification. So that's one classic sort of one mark question. Another question I've got here is the wheat crop was growing on clay soil. Clay soil is easily waterlogged. Denitrification would be lower on a farm with sandy soil that does not become waterlogged. Explain or give reasons why. The two marks on this are that denitrifying bacteria are found in anaerobic conditions or they respire anaerobically. So that's your first mark. Second one, we can say link that to the soil type. We can say sandy soils are contain more oxygen or waterlogged soils contain less oxygen. I've also seen this question. We could say, I think it was sundew was the type of plant, is a, is a carnivorous plant like a Venus flytrap. It eats insects. Why suggest why this adaptation would be useful in waterlogged soils? Well, waterlogged soils are, can be anaerobic, therefore denitrifying bacteria are gonna respire anaerobically, therefore there's low nitrogen in the soil, and therefore the plants are getting their nitrogen by being carnivorous, by consuming or dissolving the proteins in the, in the flies or the insects that they're eating. So that's typically where the questions are gonna come from. There's only gonna be a couple of markers, most important with the nitrogen cycle. Remember to map out the nitrogen cycle nice and cleanly in your head. Remember when you come to the exam question, they will have twisted and turned, they might have skipped a step, they might have joined both nitrifying stages, they might have gone from ammonium ions to nitrate ions and skipped nitrite ions. That's okay, you just have to remap your version of the nitrogen cycle onto what they've given you and just orientate yourself with it at the beginning. It's like, oh, I can see this is actually the other way around to how I've drawn it in my notes. Every single version in every single exam paper is different. You will not get the version that you have in your head the same on the exam. So make sure it's nice and clear. Spend a moment, take a breath, orientate yourself with what's going on in the diagram. Then you can think, oh, okay, so I can actually answer these questions. It's very straightforward. Most of those questions, once you've got to grips with what the, the nuts and bolts of the cycle is actually doing. Again, watch my video. I've highlighted in red all the things they're likely to ask about. Where would you suggest you find the nitrogen in the flies that are being digested by the carnivorous plant? Well, it's gonna be in the proteins, in the DNA. You, you, these are all in the notes. It should be pretty straightforward to where to go from there. Hope that helps. If you're looking for more help on videos like this, then check out the Ultimate Guide to A-Level Biology by Taylor Tutors. You can try it absolutely free. And if students are looking at this thing, why can't I leave comments on the videos? It's because you're probably a starter guide user or an essential guide user. Only ultimate guide users can leave comments on the course and get replies from me, get invited to the web classes and all that kind of stuff. So as we move towards exams, make sure you're checking things like that out. We're there to give you as much help as we possibly can. See you soon.